Hello everybody. Our next camera is a Nikon FE. It was produced from 1978 to 1983. It was one of the last uh, bodies compatible with non-auto indexing lenses. Forgot it was a Nikon there. It has this lever here and you fold it out of the way um, for older lenses. There's a release button here that releases it. Let's see if I can get that done. There we go. So now it's folded up out of the way so that the, the beveled edge here doesn't catch it. You just flip it back down. It's got a metal vertically traveling shutter. goes from 8 seconds to a thousandth of a second plus bulb. Um, this does do aperture priority, so the shutter speed dial locks at auto. You press this button here in the middle and you can swing it away from auto. Uh, flash syncs at 1 125th of a second. Um, it has a hot shoe and an old school PC sync socket. There's a ready light uh, if you're using a Nikon SB10 or later has the copper aluminum alloy chassis that was originally introduced with 1977's Nikon FM body. Uh, it's manual focus only, uh, manual, or like I said, uh, aperture priority auto exposure. Uh, it accepts uh, film from ISO 12 to 4000, and it has a lock, this little button here, so you're not accidentally monkeying with it. Does exposure compensation, plus or minus two stops and half stop steps. Because it uses a little button for the film speed, you lift up and rotate the dial for the exposure compensation. Uses two SR or LR44 batteries. That's great, really common batteries. Um, it has a battery check. This little jobber back here, I don't know if you can see that. Does a red LED when the battery's okay. It has two mechanical speeds, and it's a little bit weird because the mechanical speed is 90th of a second, and it's at the end with bulb rather than being in line where you would expect a 90th of a second to be. And this guy does not freely spin. Um, auto is all the way at one end, and you rotate all the way around to get your bulb setting or to the M90 setting, and then you got to spin the guy all the way around. It doesn't just keep spinning. Up in the pentaprism, it's got two silicon photodiodes. Those are faster responding than the cadmium sulfide. Some of the old CDS uh, meters, they get a bit of a memory, and you got to point away from a bright light for a while to let them kind of stabilize, and then you can use them again. In the viewfinder, it's got aperture direct readout, Kind of like the old Minolta's, uh, it's got a mirror set up here, so it's actually reading these little tiny letters right off the top of the lens. And then uh, it's got the match needle system showing on the left. Uh, when you're in auto mode, black shows you your shutter speed. So you just rotate the aperture and it's picking the shutter speed for you. When you're in manual, it's chase uh, the needle. The green shows you the selected shutter speed, which you have on your dial, and then the black changes as you change the f-stop. So you want to chase the green needle with the black needle uh, to make sure you're matching what the camera has metered. Um, to do an exposure lock, like for a backlighted subject or something, you, know, you get up close and you press the self-timer lever towards the lens. Um, the stuff, the readout in the viewfinder will keep moving around, but you really are locked. So then you can get back, recompose, fire the shutter. Um, the timer is 8 to about 14 seconds, I think. And uh, it's cancelable. Just you know, move it back up manually. And a great thing about it uh, is that it locks up the mirror in every speed except uh, bulb. So if you're doing astrophotography, macro stuff, where you absolutely don't want the camera body shake from the mirror slapping up, you just uh, 
use the self timer and it locks the mirror up. It doesn't have a separate uh, mirror lock function, but that works just fine. It does have a standoff here with this red dot. So that, if it's not stood off, shutter button is locked. Um, so that also enables the meter. So if your uh, winder lever is tucked in like that, it's not draining the batteries. It does multiple exposures with this little button here. So what you do is you take your shot and then you hold it and wind it. And it's a little bit in the way of your fingers. So they, the manual says you only need to hold that button for the beginning of the stroke, which is good. Otherwise you're tripping over your own finger with the wind button. But that does work. It seems a little weird, but I found the manual and you only need it for the first part of the stroke. The focus screen in this one is an E-type. Uh, the K is the one with a split image and then the microprism and then the matte field. B is just the matte field with a focusing circle in the middle. And then the E is the matte field with the focusing circle and it has a grid. Harder to use, I'm really spoiled and I like the split screen. It's compatible with, and there's no covers, they're just open, the MD-11 or the MD-12 motor, uh, motor wind accessories. Um, that also gave you a radio remote and an intervalerometer socket. I don't have that for this, but I may try and get it. The intervalerometer, um, where you can just have it take a sequence of pictures over time. That seems kind of fascinating. Maybe in the spring when the flowers are starting to bloom. I was a bit delayed uh, getting this next video out because I've been shooting a bunch of slide film and that stuff is bloody expensive and it has no shelf life. Once you mix it up, you got to use it up in a couple weeks or it goes bad. So I was shooting a bunch of slide film so that I wasn't going to waste my chemicals and I could do them all kind of in a run. So now that I've got them processed, I'm scanning like crazy and I should be able to knock out a few videos in rapid succession here. Uh, it shows you how far behind I am. I mostly was shooting fall colors up in the Sangre de Cristos, uh, just above Santa Fe. Um, so it's some, you know, some pretty pictures of the aspens up there. Um, so I'm finally caught up. I mostly used uh, this Tokina Zoom. It's 85 to 28 millimeters. I said that backwards. And then it also has a pretty good macro. I don't remember what the close focusing is there. It's closer than 0.7 meters. So, I don't know, a couple feet. I think the macro setting gets down close to a foot. I'll look that up and overlay it on the video. Sorry about that. So I'll get the rest of this uh, slide film scanned and I'll see you then.